Martin, the question, why is there anything at all, why is there something rather than nothing, has affected me since I've been a child. Whenever I think about it, my body chills. Uh, when I was younger, when I thought about that, it scared me so I tried everything to put it out of my mind. But now I have to deal with it. I have no choice. So I come to you to help me deal with my neurosis. Why is there something rather than nothing? Well, one step we've certainly taken is that we've made a great deal of progress in understanding how something as complex as the universe we inhabit can have evolved from something much smaller and much simpler. And I would say one of the great triumphs of the whole of science in the last 20 or 30 years has been to understand how our present universe of galaxies, stars and planets emerged from an amorphous and almost uniform, hot, dense beginning, which we can trace back to when the expansion timescale was a tiny fraction of a second. And this scenario in outline is, I would say, as well established as uh, anything in uh, uh, Darwinian evolution, anything in geology, the history of the Earth. We understand how, from simple beginnings, under the action of gravity and other forces, structures formed. So we can trace things back to this small amorphous beginning. But then, of course, when we go back further and further still, then conditions become so extreme that we uh, don't know the relevant physics. Uh, every particle for the first um, billionth of a second of the Big Bang has more energy than the LHC in Geneva can produce. <laughs> um, when the particles have that sort of energy, uh, then the entire visible universe was squeezed down to the size of our solar system. But if you want to go back to when we believe some of the important conditions in our universe, its expansion rate, the fluctuation, its content were imprinted, you've got to go back much further still to the stage when our entire visible universe was down the size of a tennis ball. <laughs> that's the time when we think quantum fluctuations were important, when inflation was important. And that's a key challenge for the future. But of course, that's still something rather than nothing. And uh, the question is how much further we can go. Um, I think there is hope of going back quite a bit further um, and um, putting on a firm basis the very early stages when quantum effects were important. This will depend on advances in physics. But I think um, the question of something rather than nothing is a different one. First of all, we have to uh, ask what we mean by nothing and the um, Physicist nothing is not the same as a philosopher's nothing, of course. And we have to ask, um, are the laws pre-existent? And all these questions which uh, people debate. Um, and uh, um, the basic bald question, why is there something rather than nothing, is one which I suspect we shouldn't try to answer. I think the only answer I would give is to quote um, perhaps the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, who was also a member of this college trinity where we're speaking, Ludwig Wittgenstein, who said, whereof we cannot speak, thereof we must be silent. <laughs> and I think that's the only sensible response to the question, why is there something rather than nothing? I sort of disagree with that because even if we can't access the question, I think it behooves us to explore the human condition, to surround that question and to attack that question in all possible ways. Because if indeed we cannot access it, it will at least expose what we are. But to avoid it, I think, eliminates uh, a, a real opportunity that we have to challenge our whole thinking about the, the structure of reality. I would say long before we attempt to tackle that question, we've got to solve a great deal of other challenging scientific questions, because remember, we don't understand how our brain works very well. Mm -hmm. uh, although we understand evolution, we don't understand how the first life began on the Earth. Um, and uh, we understand a bit about how our sun and the stars formed. But there are lots and lots of questions which we need to answer. And I would have thought, in our ignorance of those, it is presumptuous to believe that we can answer these more fundamental questions. And uh, uh, we ought to understand our place in nature by uh, uh, starting with uh, our immediate environments, the biosphere, etc. And that's enough of a challenge. And uh, I think to 
expect that our brains can understand these really, really deep questions about the entire universe is really expecting too much. At the risk of being slightly presumptuous, I would at least try to bound the question. And are we saying that at some point, at some level of physical law, whether it's the, the, the physical, ultimate physical laws of our universe or some metaphysical laws sitting below that that generate the physical laws of uh, ours and other universes, it, it, would that be in principle as far as we can go? I think it's going to depend on how we define nothing, but we can go a lot further than we've gone now, I suspect, in understanding the origin of our, of our universe and whether it's part of a multiverse, what the world of quantum fluctuations is, etc. And so I think uh, we can go on pushing back our knowledge. I mean, I think uh, the whole of our science has been a tradition of that. Let's go back to Newton. He understood uh, why the planets move in their orbits, the ellipses, his laws told him this. But what he didn't understand was why all those orbits are in the same plane, <laughs> whereas the comets are in random directions. Mm -hmm. We now do understand that mm -hmm. because we understand that our solar system formed from a spinning dusty disk mm -hmm. and the planes of the planets is the plane of that, that disk and we can trace things back, not just to the formation of the solar system, but right back to the uh, uh, first fraction of a second. This is an amazing achievement. Mm. And... I think this progress has further to go, and I hope that progress will continue, um, but this is the nature of science, and I think we must just hope for step-by-step -step progress and hope that our brains are able to understand the next steps.